right, hello and um, welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Scott F. Parody, who is in Alaska. How are you doing, Scott? I'm doing well, John. It's great to be with you. Yeah, listen, and, and this is great to see you, Scott. And, and Scott helps people achieve their full potential through his transformational books, online programs, live trainings, helps them understand the way life works so they can embrace their ultimate power. And uh, you had a, what is it, a 30 plus year career with the um, U.S. Army retiring at the rank of Colonel. That's right. That's right. I uh, joined in 1980 and I retired in 2011, the end of 2011. Wow. Well, listen, thank you for your service and congratulations on, thank on, you. on, this, on such a career. Uh, and today what we're going to talk about is leadership and particularly, obviously, uh, it's not a newsflash that the world is in uh, a transition right now. And there's a lot of things that have happened and and are happening. And leaders need to not just understand you know, what is happening, but they need to lead now by em empowering people and co-opting people into the process of moving forward. Um, so, so Scott, um, let's get straight into it. What do you think over the last couple of years and with the pandemic and with all these changes, what do you think has changed about leadership or a focus, a focus of leadership or has it or do the, do the fundamentals remain the same? I think the fundamentals always remain the same, but the challenge is implementation and a lot of folks and, and this is I think there's a, a great um, expansion and evolution happening right now and so a lot of people are feeling the angst the anxiety surrounding all of that and part of our fallback position is always go back to something secure something we can try to control and that's really what most people really desire is if only I could control things then life would be so much smoother so much better and we see that in leadership as well. I say there are two types of leaders. One is the trailblazer, the innovator, and, and that person is just becoming who they are, just doing what they do, setting a new course, charting a new way, and many people will follow them because of the excitement of that new path. But then there are all the team leaders, and that's what we more commonly refer to as leaders. And these are the folks who are socially engaged, connected with people trying to achieve an objective. The challenge is most people, and this is where, and we could get into this a little bit, John, if you wanted to, but where we fall back on ego, that idea of control and security, as opposed to expansion and the greater good, because we're all connected, we're all in this together, and I know that sounds like a trite phrase, but it really, we really are, and we're in this together. So people who fall back to the basics of leadership realize that leadership is not about me achieving my objective. It's about helping other people become who they can actually become, uh, become yeah, and, greater and versions of themselves. Yeah, and those are, those are, those are excellent, uh, excellent observations, Scott, because I do think when people first get into leadership positions, as you said, team leaders or whatever, um, sometimes they think it is about basically uh, telling people what to do to, for want of a better thing. It's basically, you know, I got these people now. I just need to get them to do what I need them to do and everything will be good. What you outlined is like getting them to be the best version of themselves is a little bit different. Yes. Yes. Because the ultimate objective for all of us, and I see, we see a task and, and sometimes, you know, leaders refer to carrots and sticks. We talk about carrots and sticks. I'm going to, I'm going to either punish someone or reward someone. Sometimes you need to use carrots and sticks, but what that is is to help motivate them to ultimately grow and progress. So I say there are four traits to a good leader in the, I call it C4. So the C, first is competence. You, you, gotta, you gotta know what you're about and, and be competent at whatever it is you're attempting to do. But the other ones are caring. By the way, just 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 on that, on the competence one, um, Scott, I think this is where a lot of people do get unraveled because maybe they about to move into a leadership position and then they start to question their own competence. Right. Or maybe they do have confidence gaps, competence gaps. But instead of addressing them, uh, they try to hide them. And that's where you get the ego and that's where you get conflict. Yes, yes. You know, as I talk to folks who aspire to be leaders in the organization, I say, why aren't you taking steps now? 
And it's always, I need to learn one more thing. I need to develop one more thing. When the truth is they already have within them what they need to lead. The challenge is it's this idea of many folks fall prey to the imposter syndrome. I, I have to be some vision of what I expect a leader to be, to be perfect in every way before I can make a step. The real truth is you got to be vulnerable. You got to accept that you don't know everything. You're going to learn with your team. And as long as you are honest and truthful, because the whole, the whole system, everything hinges on trust. As long as you are honest and truthful, you can build trust and then together you can figure it out. It isn't a matter of got to get all my ducks in a row, got to get all my stars aligned to get it right. That's never going to happen. You're good enough the way you are. Just trust your other people and together you'll figure it out. Yeah, and I do. And I agree. I think the imposter syndrome just uh, it really derails a lot of a lot of people. And it's a it's it's a real thing. And and the other and part of that is if you go in, as we said, with that attitude, then you're insecure and your insecurities yes. will come out, come out in, in different ways. But just by the point you just made there where you say it's always like, oh, there's one more thing. I think the other thing is. Sometimes people sit around in organizations waiting for the organization to say, oh, hey, Scott, I'm going to train you how to be a leader. And hey, listen, fantastic. If that happens, you should get trained by organization. But the chances of it happening are, you know, slim at the best. So you have to invest in yourself. And this is the part that I don't understand sometimes is why people don't invest in themselves. Part of that, I think you're exactly right. They're waiting. They're waiting for someone else to do it for them or, or provide the training or the company's going to do it. And uh, I'm just I want to give you a quick anecdote. One time this was when I was back still in uniform and we were at a college campus. We we're actually on uh, I think we we're at MIT talking to some students. And these were ROTC cadets who were going to get commissioned and join the Army. And the expectation now this was 2011. The expectation was or 20, 2007 expectation was they're going to end up in a combat zone. So some of the young students came up to me and said, would it be useful for me to learn language skills of, of Middle Eastern languages and, and culture? And I, and I said, absolutely, that's a great thing to do. Now, a colleague of mine had a very different viewpoint. He said, now, wait a minute, wait a minute, don't worry about that. The army will provide you what you need. And I think that gets to your point is yes. if, we wait, if we wait for others to provide you, you can tell what needs to be done. It really, the challenge is taking the step and taking the action and doing it. In this case, in, in the case with those young students, it was to educate themselves with language skills and cultural awareness and all those other things that would help them because they're more than likely gonna end up somewhere in the Middle East and it would serve them well and it would serve the native, the folks who live there well as, as, as well. Yeah, no, I I love that point because it's a great anecdote. Because yeah, on the on the second one of the the other your other colleague, um, you know that's back to again as you said, you know the army will provide everything you need. Therefore, just sit back and wait, and you'll you'll be told what to do. And that's that's um, you know initiative killing in many ways. Yes. Um, the other thing. So you were saying the second the second C of leadership. Well, so of the four competence, and and that's critical. And, but as I said, it's not a matter of you got to know everything. It's a matter of understanding who you are and moving forward with some confidence in your team. Mm -hmm. Then after that, the other three, th second one is caring. And this is, this is one where you have to care about your people, actually care about the people as people. And this goes back to my point of the ultimate objective of leadership is to help your team, the followers, your team members grow. So you've got to actually genuinely care. Third point is commitment. Now, this is the commitment to whatever that goal is, whatever that objective is. We've all seen leaders who say, you know, go execute this, do this, do what I, whatever I tell you, but they themselves are not really committed to the objective. So you've got to be committed to the whatever the objective is, and you've got to lead through that commitment. And then the fourth component to that, the fourth C, is courage courage. And it goes back to your original point of oftentimes we sit back and we wait and we're going to be told, we're going to be motivated, we're going to be urged. No, nope, sometimes it just takes some courage to step out what needs to be done and I'm going to do it. And, and I'm going to get other people to help me do that as well. Yeah. And, and just coming back, I just want to go back to, to a couple of these. Uh, so the, the, the caring one, um, caring for them as people. I also think that here's another mistake I think people fall into, and it's typical in, in business today, is you just recruit and recruit and recruit, right? You know, the idea, 
get my team bigger and bigger and bigger. And the more people, it's like the better the company's doing, the more people they have. And rather than take a step back and say, you know, let's recruit for the right people. And because I'm a big believer in small teams with the right people are going to be more effective. And I just think it's very hard if you're going to, you know, care about the people and really get to know the people if you're just adding bodies all the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I'm on board with you that 100%, John. And you see that all the time. It's, it's growth is the objective. It's really this idea of quality versus quantity. And I think quality is the key. Yeah. And the other thing you mentioned there about, uh, you know, the com- commitment, because here, because this is something else I also think that sometimes people overlook is, is let's face it, you model behavior, people pay attention to what you're doing and, and, and your attitude and everything as opposed to the words you say. So it's I always say that it's like in an organization, if your leadership tell you, here's the latest initiative, Scott, we're going to do this, right? And if I never refer to it again, or I go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that that thing you go, okay, cool. That was initiative du jour. I don't have to worry about it because they don't care about it. Yes, yes. And you see that in the mission, vision, value statements that some companies will spend millions of dollars. They'll hire consultants. They'll have weekend retreats. They'll put together this beautiful vision, mission statement and all that. They'll tack it on their wall. They'll broadcast it across the organization. And then they'll do something 180 degrees opposed to what is on the mission statement and their vision of the organization. Yeah, no, I always call those. I love those the, the bumper stickers. It's like the one where you know, if you if you did a if you did a search of every organization, you'd probably find customer centric somewhere in their mission statement. But I guarantee you, your experience with some of those brands are less than customer. <laughs> Yes, and yes. customer center. Um, on the on the on the part of courage, uh, Scott, because that that's really interesting. Because part of leadership, it's easy to be it's easy to be a leader when things are going well, right? It's difficult to be a leader when things are going badly. And sometimes things, as we know, I mean, you know better than anyone being in the army. I mean, sometimes initially things probably go get worse before they get better, and you have to have the courage to stick at it and keep people with you. Yes, you know, you know that's a really. The leaders we think of in history were leaders who faced significant adversity. And that's when they rose to to their real, to the challenge. And that's how they exhibited that level of leadership. Now, the folks we think of historically, big, big events and all that, but it does happen for us individually in small ways, in small organizations. And it's taken those little steps, those little steps of doing the right thing, even when no one's looking, because... You, you don't know the ripple effect that's always gonna, that's going to have. One thing is by taking the right step, even when no one's looking, it's affecting you and affects your own attitude and how you approach life and how you approach your team and how you approach whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. So it's it's a, courage is a key tenant to me of leadership. Yeah. And, and like I said, I mean, it's it's often, uh, you know, when you start an initiative, you know, that's the hardest time when it's not looking like it's working. And and that's when your team is looking at you going, is he still confident? Does he still look like this is all good? Um, you know, and, and so you you have to, as you said, the, the confidence earlier, but also the courage to tell everybody, keep going, keep going. Everything's fine. Or alternatively, which I think is is even harder in 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 business today is trying to stop something or get out of something that's not working because that takes courage too to say listen you know we're on the wrong path here this is not working we're going to scrap it and i'm sorry about all the hard work everybody's put in but we need to pivot yes yes and that that you know the biggest challenge is most folks it's an ego challenge with that because i've got to admit that i was wrong or we were wrong or, or something is wrong and you see company after company organization after organization just not willing to admit that either circumstances changed or something made went wrong they have to have the courage to say okay we're 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 still okay we're just going to reorient head in a different direction and make progress i i was wrong i accept it it's my fault let's keep moving forward if you build trust if you build trust amongst your team then they'll accept that that's just that's just not all of us are imperfect. And so you've got to admit that now and again. And you see more and more companies, unfortunately, are failing because it's, they're just clinging tight to ego and saying, I've, I've got to be right at all costs. And, and the organization ends up paying a price for that. 
Yeah, yeah, because I mean, I think uh, what I used to always say to any of my teams was, uh, as you say, don't get married to your projects because what my, I may come to you one day and tell you what you've been working on for the last six months, you've poured your heart and soul into. Uh, we have to leave it right now and we've got to pivot to something else. And you kind of got to be okay with that, even yes. though I know how frustrating that will be. <laughs> yes, yes. No, I know it is. It's true. It is frustrating. But again, a good team, you'll, you'll get beyond that. Just one other point to make about the building that team. There are times when you got to have the courage to let people go. In other words, cut them loose from the team because they have demonstrated that this is not the right growth opportunity for them. So you've got to cut them from the team and let them go find the right growth opportunity. But that takes courage as well, especially for somebody who has been a stellar player in the past. You've, you've got to take some courage to, to have those difficult conversations with people and move forward. Yeah, I know. I'm glad you raised that one, because I do think this is one of the, the most critical points when it comes to courage, because sometimes we hide behind a you know, a, a, a false compassion, you know, we say, oh, well, let's try them in this position. Let's try them, maybe give them another, put them on this task and whatever. And reality at the end of the day is we know deep down that they're not going to succeed, but we're taking the cowardly way out in many ways of just you know, shuffling them around or giving right. them second, third, fifth chances. And the reality is that we're robbing them of the opportunity to go and excel somewhere else. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and that's why I just think that's a critically a critical point is to have the courage when the time is right to 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 say, yeah, okay, this isn't working, and I need to I need to give this person the gift of other opportunities. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, where do you see um, uh, one of the one of the interesting things, Scott? Is I mean, and you have probably obviously experiences in the army. You know, been in there for so long with all these different generations of people, right? Apparently, we've got the most generations in the workforce today than ever before. Uh, so, what challenges does that have in leadership? Because I think in 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 the past there was a time when we kind of were able to have a one size fits all leadership style, but with so many generations and so many different ways of 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 receiving information, different motivations, all of that, you can't do that anymore. No, I think you're exactly right. Part of the challenge, of course, you can say individually everybody's different, but we're more alike than we are different. But generally, generationally, which is an interesting point that you bring up, John, this idea of there are actual, I don't want to say necessarily attitudes, but they've been folks in different generations do have a type and, and a, a way of doing business, sort of a collective culture in their generation that makes leadership, especially with the baby boomers, the baby boomers, we, I was talking to my, my brother-in-laws who about my age as well. And, and he said, what happened to the old days of, you know, just 12 hours a day work till the mission's done. And another person said, look, the younger generation doesn't see it that way. But when you really step back and think about it, when you saw what was going on in the seventies and the eighties and the, the, the baby boomers coming into the workforce, it was nose to the grindstone and all of that. And people have recognized now, now some things have changed in corporations and how we, productivity versus wage levels and all of those kinds of things, which is which adds to the, the mix. But the, the point is that folks now are realizing experience, the younger generation in particular is looking for experiences. And so in work, they're looking for growth experiences and opportunities, but also flexibility with their work and all the rest. And senior managers, or, or, or let's say more seasoned managers, or in my case, just older managers, have to realize that, that the younger folks see things a little differently than say my generation did coming up through through the ranks. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges facing now is to create the new kind of hybrid organization where you can offer this kind of flexibility. I mean, we have, we have people, we've run a largely virtual organization for a long time. And we've even discovered now that the people that we had, like the programmers that we had in, in, in Slovakia that were always in the office and we assumed they always wanted to be in the office. Now they're the same, they don't want to come back in. So a virtual organization, we had one person who got tired of the lockdowns there and relocated her family to Thailand for a month and is, you know, as a project manager working away on stuff. So I think that that idea of, 
of flexibility as long as you're getting the as long as you're getting the results as long as they're doing what you want them to do i think yeah for for some of us who've been around in traditional grown up in traditional organizations there's a lot of we need to be flexible with and not just for the young people but for everybody to no to, no to absolutely work as is to make work as palatable as possible I agree. I agree. And, and, and part of it, it goes back to my initial premise, which is we're, we're all on a growth journey and leadership is about helping people grow. Now, you'll, you'll set objectives and tasks that will help you economically and help the organization. But it also comes back to what is the fundamental purpose of business? And the fundamental purpose of business is to help people get what they want and need. And organizations need to remember that. And that's how leadership contributes to helping people get what they want and need then they, their employees, the members of the organization have wants and needs as well. And we help them get what they want and need through good leadership. Yeah, listen, absolutely fantastic. Listen, all of Scott's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, Scott, please do tell people a little bit more about what you do. Well, primarily, I'm, I'm focused on leadership and success. So I've, I've written books, put together educational programs, deliver keynote talks and presentations and workshops, all focused on the fundamental principles of leadership and success. So by all means, you can reach out and get in touch with me and I can help in any way that I can. Yeah, listen, fantastic. And again, like what a fantastic career. I mean, 30 year plus years in the army and, and you know, retiring as a colonel, that's a fantastic achievement. So thank you for sharing your wisdom today. Uh, my name is John Golden. I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.